Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to the second um, subject of this course which is animation. Now in this course we are going to talk about animation, everything about animation theoretically. Uh, we are going to talk about the uh, concept of animation, categories, formats, uh, softwares and so on. And then next week we are going to um, practice you know um, using a software to create our own animation uh, first of all let me uh, share with you my slides okay so uh, so we are going to actually start with an introduction of animation the role of animation in education but first of all i would like to thank dr jamal uh Jamaluddin Harun for his actually sharing the content uh with me so that I, I would be able to uh use the these slides all right first of all let me go through the role of animation the meaning of animation and education what does it mean and so on so animation is actually referring to bringing something to life this is the uh the 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 basic words the latin words meaning okay so from you know uh, uh, the understanding of uh animation meanings it's actually the how to convert for example i can a still image or something you know still or static to something more uh alive something more movement and so on this is the meaning of animation and what do we actually uh why do we actually need animation these are some of the common uses of animation we could use it in education engineering medical advertisement and so on uh, when we use uh, animation in education or medical or engineering we could actually uh, be talking about saving money saving costs you know simplifying the in the information or the skills the knowledge that we have you know we were talking about uh, advertising we are actually talking about something catchy something attractive something trendy that everybody is actually going with now animation assessed with the delivery of concept that is actually virtually complex and dynamic and it's actually easier to be mapped into the minds of students and to help the process of understanding what do we mean here is what do we mean here is that we actually simplifying whatever knowledge whatever uh, skills whatever process that we have so that the students could be more engaged more understandable of the uh, concept that we are going to uh, teach especially we, when we for example teaching kindergarten students we usually use cartoon we use colorful you know uh, animation uh, um, books and so on so there are basically two main reasons for using instructional animation which is effective and cognitive when we talk about effective purpose we meant to attract and capture attention because we need to catch the students you know attention at all times um, we can also include increase the uh, motivation because of their novelty something you know something unusual for the students uh, to watch so that they could they could be involved they could be engaged uh, in the process of teaching and learning all right and then we have cognitive purpose where we can actually facilitate learning because they provide more and different information than static graphics now we are to when we are talking about animation we are talking about actually using more than one media at the same time we are talking about using graphics and video and audio at the same time so by this combination we are actually producing something very attractive for the students to follow and for the students actually to be you know uh, engaged uh, we actually want to make sure they are actually um, taking parts in the teaching and learning process 
Now, for the functions that animation can fulfill, such as explaining a dynamic process, visualizing 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 things that cannot be seen with the naked eye, simulating a system, making abstract concept more concrete, uh, visualizing you know quantitative data, for example, in figures and in in, in, in um, graphs and so on, improving you know uh, students' abilities or whatever creating learning game or elements and so on so there are actually many many benefits or advantages of using animation and education now what is even better the newer technology has made this uh let's say uh, style of you know media or whatever which is making animation is more um, doable you know because Everybody now can use their own laptop to create uh, animation. Now, let's talk about the techniques of the animation, okay? First, we have you know, different types of animation. There are various types, many, many different types of animation techniques practiced by filmmakers all over the world, all right? The classic type, which is 2D animation, digital 3D animation, stop motion, cloud animation, cut out animation, we are going to study each one. And now, how to choose the appropriate type of animation is actually more about the, the demands or the requirements. You, you need to decide what is you know what is this animation for so uh, to be able to actually decide uh, what type of animation you would go through uh, so it depends on the budget the quality the style the requirements and so on so we actually have these six main types of animation which is drawing animation stop motion, clay animation, cut out animation, digital animation, and 3D animation. Let's discuss one by one. Work the same way as flip book. You know, drawing animation has the same concept of drawing book. Now, what we do actually in drawing book is that we draw a frame by frame. Each uh, page has a different you know frame from the previous one so that when we play it together we can feel we can see the movement now drawing has the same concept what we actually do in drawing is that we draw a different you know uh, let's say keyframes each keyframe has a different movement so that when we play it all together we will get the final product or the final movement now to be able to actually uh, produce a one second drawing animation we need to at least draw 12 keyframes let's say i want to uh you know move my hand from this position to this position then i'm going to fill out the whole movement with at least 12 keyframes to be able to get one second animation now if you can see here in this uh, rabbit right here if we can look at one frame only one frame from these four this is actually a still image all right we cannot do anything with it but if you gather these four frames then you can have a full uh, animation movement all right and this is how we actually differ between uh, these two now how do how does it work actually in this drawing animation usually the companies that produce uh, animation in this type 2d animation they actually use a4 papers all right uh, but it's not like this one it's like it, it you, it's actually a transparent but the same measurement a4 and then they will ask uh, the artists to actually draw a character and then move this character in keyframes which means uh, character a 
has one file all right he has a walking he has talking he has a running movement he has let's say a sleeping movement so whenever they need this character they will call these documents and then uh, use it so uh, let's say if I want to produce one second of you know a cat walking right so how to produce this one second i need at least 12 frames 12 frames of the movement okay so each frame will be uh different from the previous one now in digital 2d animation technique animation frames are drawn directly on software using mouse or pen tip tablet this technique is used mostly for tv series and web animation so it's not necessarily to draw it on purpose nowadays we can actually use or draw using uh, adobe animate or using a tablet or a mouse or whatever pen, smart pen on the uh on your laptops or whatever this is actually an example you can uh, visit this video to see this technique needs to draw images on paper before transfer it to the uh, computer. As I, as I mentioned, after we actually draw whatever frames that we have on the papers, then we need to scan to actually insert these documents in our laptops and then we will uh, transfer it to the software that we are using and then only then we can actually color it, animate it, and, and so on. Advantage for drawing animation is attractive, beautiful, uh, is actually manageable. It used to be, uh, it actually it used it is used for something that uh, we can control. And then for the disadvantages, it requires a lot of work. It requires manpower. I used to work on a company that produces uh, animation. Uh, you know, our team consisted of, let's say, 40 or 45 a person. You know, each person has one task. M you know, most of the team consisted of artists, which are responsible. They were responsible to actually only draw the frames on papers and then maybe five or six uh, were responsible to um, the computer work you know uh, cleaning or drawing again on the computer and then uh, coloring somebody for the uh, animation somebody only for creating the background of the scenes and so on now for the stop motion uh, no need to set the character purpose or object in the desired state or uh, pose against the background to expose you know uh, so you need one character and then this character you actually need to set it on the desired state of the background and then you are going to only move this character accordingly and then you take picture of each movement each frames and then same uh, a concept which you know you are going to put all the frames together to get the movement uh, this can be an example of stop and motion uh, this one as well you can see here how uh, this person is actually responsible to move this object or, or this uh, character and then they will take frame by frame uh, if you can see here, this is a more example. Shaun the Sheep is actually a very famous uh, series, which is uh, using the same concept, which is stop motion animation. This is how to produce it. They can actually they create um, the movement by their hands, and then they take photos with the different you know positions. The advantages is very nice. It can be repeated, you know, but it takes a lot, a lot of work, a lot of time to produce. Uh, let's say the production of animation of James and the Giant Peach takes about a week just to record a scene, one scene, which means 
in 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 um, uh, which means in one day, for example, they have only produced uh, forty five seconds or something. Now for the uh, next one, which is clay animation, is one of the many forms of stop motion animation because it's very actually popular, just like this the stop motion animation, but using clay. And this is an example, which is a chicken run. For the advantages, it can be used over and over again. Same, you know, uh, movement, same keyframes, and so on. And for the disadvantages, it needs a lot of time and hard work. Same goes to uh, stop motion. Uh, uh, you know, to complete 45 seconds of stop motion animation a week, 10 seconds a day. Can you imagine the work and and actually the team usually will be more than 20 or 30 person now for the third type which is cut out is a stop motion technique same technique for producing animation you, but the difference is we are using a flat character okay with a background this is an example so we are using actually flat characters props and background cut from materials such as papers and so on and this is an example of the character and how we cut it out how to actually move this part of the body alone and this is a real life example how to do a cut out animation the advantages very simple can be produced quickly in comparison with uh, stop motion and clay motion it's difficult to prepare more than one or two pieces or to move them at the same time this is one of the disadvantages now for the digital computer animation which the which are the ones that are are you know famous nowadays for example 2d animation 2d animation 3d animation uh, we use computers to produce them uh, the animation is created digitally on a computer. It takes less time to, pr to produce even more, you know. Uh, 2D, uh, 2D animation techniques tend to focus on image manipulation, while 3D techniques usually build virtual worlds in which characters and objects move and interact. For the 2D, uh, for the 2D animation, Animation figures are created and or edited on the computer using 2D bitmap or vector graphics. If you guys remember uh, bitmap and vector from our previous class. For the 3D actually, we are not using a bitmap, we are not, we are not using images, we are actually modeling the character itself using a software. And then when we model this character, we are uh, coming and then we animate this character this is an example of how to model a character if you can see you can see the uh 360 degree of the character you can see all sides that's why we called we call it a 3d character and last 2d you can see only the flat the front you know uh, interface of the character Okay, now let's go with the concept of the animation. How actually does animation work? How does it work? The concept of animation. Now, animation was actually basically done manually, handwriting, before the development of computer animation. So, as I mentioned before, before we use computers to develop animation or to create animation it used to be done through drawing on papers and then put together all the frame and then the final product is going to be the uh, output so to actually be able to produce one second of animation the artists need to create 24 images for one movement. 
okay so let's say i want to walk for one second only i want to walk so i need 24 frames of me walking these 24 frames are going to produce one second video of animation so we actually need too many frames for this kind of work that's why animation back then it was actually very very hard to produce so to be able to produce animation back then uh, it was actually very inclusive for a very big companies for example walt disney and other companies uh, like that but now nowadays everyone i can right now i can actually create my own animation for any idea that i i am actually desire to now to be able to understand the basic uh terms of animation or the concept of animation you need to understand these uh terms right and what each one of them mean so I'm actually going to give you some time to uh, uh, explore the meaning of it, to understand uh, each one of these terms. And then maybe next uh, week, I'm going to ask some questions about these terms. Now, for the keyframe, which is the first term, as I mentioned, it's actually one spot of the movement. Now, I, I have mentioned that each movement has 24 frames which is the details of the movement for example my hand this is the, this is position a and this is position z the final position to be able to create this uh, motion or animation i need to create i need to fill all these frames okay now as many as i put frames more frames the final product the quality of the final product is going to be better right so let's say i have actually drawn 12 frames for this motion it's going to be very smooth and if i done 24 let's say one frame one two three four five six seven eight nine ten etc so it's going to be even uh, more clear and so on now for this example right here watch drawing refers to key frames and why if you can see one and two it's not actually uh, on this th th there's no flow between uh, the uh, pose in, in in number one and number two but if you look at number one and number seven you are going to notice that they could be actually uh you know following the the frames are following each other so it's going to be one and then seven maybe then six all right and then maybe a three and then and then two and then four and then finally sorry five and then finally four this is the sequence of the keyframes and then we have tweening tweening comes from the word in between which means that we have let's say my hand this is the position the first position and then this is the final position so this first position this is the final position whatever comes in between this is called tweening frames okay so these are the frames that comes from the first position and the final position in the middle in between okay so in animation a frame is a single complete image out of the sequence of images comprising an animation taken uh, along the frame is just a drawing as i mentioned if we take if we look at these four uh, frames only one of them it doesn't mean anything for animation it's just a still image but when we combine them together we will get an animation
So a frame by frame animation is animation technique to make a physical manipulated object appear to move on its own. There's actually no animation on it. It's still images, but they are arranged in a sequence so that when we play them together, we will have this kind of motion or animation. The object is moved by small amounts between individually photographed frames, creating the illusion of movement when the series of frames are played as a continuous sequence. So it's actually, uh, you know, many frames, let's say 12, 24 frames put together and then played. And then the final product, the outcome is, is, is like, you know, an animation or a movie. Now, for the frame rates, which is very, very important thing to understand, guys. Now, we have 24 frames per second. We have 60 frames per second. We have 30. We have 120. As much as I fill frames in the movement, the quality of the animation is going to be higher. So, obviously... An animation film with 120 frames per second is very much higher in quality in comparison with a 24 frames per second. Okay, why is that? Because 120 frames has a you know a lot of details inside this movement. This is an example of only nine frames per second and six frames per second obviously when you play the six frames per second you are going to notice that there is actually a gap in the movement all right but in the nine frames per second there's going to be more smooth movement and if you put 24 it's going to be even better so the accepted rate, uh, you know, rate of frames are between 24 to 30, uh, which the animation will appear very smooth. So a frame rate that is too slow makes the animation appear to, uh, you know, gaps. There are gaps between each movement, while a frame rate that is too fast plurs the details of the animation. So you need to actually consider... Uh, choosing the right amount of frames uh, in drone animation moving characters are often shot on twos that is to stay one drawing is shown to every frame so it's actually uh, 12 frames multiple two yeah this is the uh, concept of animation how does it work and then let's now go ahead and see go ahead and see the next slides which are the technique the categories of animation now, when we talk about animation, we are actually talking about three main categories, which are two-dimensional animation, three-dimensional animation, and visual effects animation. Let's discuss one by one. When we talk about two-dimensional animation, we are talking about uh, these four you know, we are talking about one of these four categories, which is path animation, cell animation, screen, and object. What do we mean by by path animation is that uh, we are actually talking about transferring an object from uh, position A to position Z. Let's say this one, th this example right here. Uh, we actually draw. A path or we draw a path that the object will follow from 
point A to point Z. So this path could be a straight path or could be curve, circle, whatever you actually decide. The second one, which is digital cell based frame or based animations, are actually based on the usual transition cell animation. Uh, it requires each image be prepared either manually. This one, same as the drone animation. So we draw whether in uh, papers and then we scan it and then we uh, draw it again on our computers or we directly draw it using a tablet or smart pen. And then it's actually arranged to uh, allow each image to be displayed one by one on a set time rate, which called time frame or timeline, all right? In this timeline, we arrange these keyframes and then we play. When we play, we will get the motion. And then we have screen animation, which also known as object transition animation. What do we mean by transition? Actually, it's a it's kind of effect that we use between scenes. For example, uh, you know, playing with the light, playing with the zoom in and zoom out, the size of the object, and so on, the color, the lightning, and so on. This is an example of it. How to change the brightness uh, level of the image? How to change the image in terms of illumination and so on then we have 3d animation which actually referred to something that has actually depth you know which make us, uh, which ma makes it able to be displayed more realistic object not like the 2d how to do that actually because we kind of got get you know um kind of you know uh, points of view it produce a uh, real dimensional scene not only flat for example tom and jerry it has a flat uh, view which is 2d while other animation 3d animation has you can see you can feel that it's actually real objects you see here this is the differences between 2d and 3d you can see in the 2d it's actually uh, a flat picture you cannot see other dimension one dimension only while on the other hand this one you can feel like it's a real object a real uh, character right same goes to the bear the dog and so on and here are some of the softwares that we can actually produce uh, 3d web we are going to discuss that with our last uh, slides and then finally, the third type is called visual effects. When we talk about visual effects, we are talking about something that is not real, but it appears very real in the movies. For example, in the uh, superhero movies, when we see you know a lot of cars crashes or airplane crashes, uh, you know these kind of fire, clouds, rain. All this kind of thing is called visual effects, VFX. This is actually not real. We use it to display uh, this kind of, you know, effects. Okay. And visual effects has many, you know, sub, let's say, subtypes. One of them is called morphing which is an, uh, you know, a special effect that utilizes two or more images um, will then go through the process of transformation. So to be able to get this morphing, we need one picture as initial stage and then we need last picture as the final stage. Let's see an example here. If you want to go from this character to the other character, you need one picture to one picture, and then uh, this software is going to actually fill these uh, keyframes with, you know, different uh, images. 
one more example here let's say this baby kid you know is the initial image and then this grown man is the final image and these three keyframes what morphing has done which is you know uh, matching between the initial image and the last image and then we have something called wrapping wrapping is actually something very similar to morphing but it needs only one image so what we actually do in wrapping we actually dislocate some of the parts or we actually uh, change the position of some of the parts we actually um, expand some parts and so on and then we finally go with the formats and the softwares of animation so in this uh, this part of the session we are going to talk about the important formats that you need to know when when we talk about animation and the important softwares as well first we have the file format there are actually many various formats for storing digital animation files such as autodesk a 3D Studio, which is a software for modeling 3D uh, animation or characters. Characters. Uh, the format is FLI or FLC. And then we have Shock Wave Flash SWF, Animated GIF, Dynamic HTML. First, we have. And before we go with the format, we have actually a different formats for the video as well. Uh, if you want to save your animation as a video file or video clip that have the following file formats. MOV, Quick Time Movie, which is something um, special for, you know, Apple devices. And then we, hit, we have AVI, this is for Windows, MPEG. Uh, and then finally we have flash video now the first format is SWF this one used to be for a, a software called flash you know it's just flash before Adobe actually uh, buy this software it used to be called flash and then Adobe uh, bought this software and it used to call to be called Adobe flash all right and uh, it stayed for a few years until it's no longer relevant because Adobe has created another software called Adobe Animate. Now, Adobe Animate is used instead of Adobe Flash. And this is the, um, the let's say, the, the, the format that you can get when you use this software. And this one is actually very, very... Uh, easy or simple to use with a very high quality 2d animation and the size is not uh, very big so that you can use it in a website but the only thing that uh, you need to use is you need to use a plug so that it will actually run in your uh, internet explorer other other uh otherwise it will not be able to you will not be able actually to see unless you get the adobe flash player plug in uh and then we have gif i believe we have actually discussed about gif in um the first part of this uh, course when we talk about graphics so GIF could be a graphic and could be animation as well because it actually consists of frames as well. So it's very popular because of the light size and the many, let's say, useful uh, use of this kind of uh, format. And then we have dynamic HTML. Uh, which is hypertext markup language so it's, it's animation but we use programming we use coding 
to actually let's say um, move or uh, animate the character and so on now for the formats in general for the software uh, animation software can be divided into three categories as well softwares for the 2d softwares for the 3d and softwares for the special effects now uh, the one highlighted with the red font is the very common softwares that are actually used worldwide for example in the 2d we have adobe animate used to be flash as i mentioned we have anime studio uh, we have simfix studio switch max toon boom i personally used toon boom and toon boom actually one of the software for 2d and 3d as well okay these are some of the examples or the interface of the softwares uh, to produce 2d animation okay this is adobe animate interface you can see here adobe animate and then for the 3d uh, there are so many softwares as well uh, most common or most you know famous software of uh, producing 3d animation is autodesk 3d max and maya Autodesk 3D Mask and Maya and Cinema 4D as well. Lightwave 3D for texture, background, environment. They are very, very famous. So the common uh, special effects such as morphing, wrapping can be generated using uh, morphing software such as Adobe Photo Morph and so on. Now for this course, we are going to study uh, this software or this application as an example to produce our own animation. So uh, in, in next class, we are going to actually practice uh, using this software or uh, application which is called Putoon. We are going to create our own animation using this software i believe all of you almost in your final semester so uh, you are going to be teachers very very soon uh, so you are going to actually need this kind of you know multimedia to use in your inside your class um, that's why it's very important for you now we have actually discussed in this session everything you know almost everything about animation the meaning of animation the role of animation in education uh, how does it work the concept the categories the formats the differences between 2d and 3d and visual effects and most importantly the main uh, let's say concept that you need to be aware of when we talk about animation which are keyframe what does keyframe means what does tweening means how many frames per second that we actually need if we are looking for something high quality and how uh, actually this kind of uh, frame per second can affect the quality of our work and so on so i hope everything uh, was clear in this session um that's all for today and as i mentioned next week inshallah we are going to discuss about the practical part we are going to uh talk about portune uh application and then we will apply together that's all for today assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh